The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Monday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien, coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. we got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. Big week of earnings. we got Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Meta coming out with their numbers throughout the week. We have a Federal Reserve meeting Wednesday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. That announcement is due. We get the jobs number on Friday. You have the Bank of Japan. You get the Bank of England coming in line with their announcements as well. And we kick things off with a little bit of positive action in the markets. S&Ps up by 18 points right now, coming in at one third percent in the green at 55.17. In the last few minutes, though, since I was getting ready to come on the air, last 20, 25 minutes, S&P is giving back some of those gains. We were positive by 35 points. We're positive now just by 17. You see a slight give back this morning. NASDAQ 100, we're up by 121 points, about six-tenths percent in the positive right now, trading at 19,294. The Dow up 107 right now. Trading at 40,938. And as I mentioned, all the markets giving it up slightly in the last 20 or 25 minutes. And the Russell up by seven so far this morning. We were up, though. I mean, Russell, you talk about volatility, just gave up 14 points. That's half a percent in that index. We were almost nearing 2,300. We're trading at 2,285. Bitcoin having quite a weekend. Up to 70,615. We take a look at Bitcoin. You put that on the weekly. Coming back right to the near the all-time highs. I mean, we're basically back in the range, right? 70,000 is basically the mark. We got a couple tails above that point. But really, 70,000 is the price point in terms of the higher part of that range that we've been in this year. You were just at a price point in early this month of 53,000. We're trading at 70,615 right now. Crude, lower prices. We're trading down 31 pennies. Back to a short-term time frame. There's your 15-minute. Down 31 pennies at 76.85 for the price of crude. Gold, slightly in the positive. Up by $10 at 24.38 this morning. We jumped to notes and bonds on the all-important Fed week. What do we got? We got lower price. Higher yield coming at you right now. We got the 10-year up by eight ticks at 111.14. How about the 10-year yield at 4.15? 4.15%, man. Check it out. There's your daily. 111.15, the recent highs of July 17th, 111.15. So we're right at those recent highs. But no matter how you look at it, higher highs, higher lows, higher price, lower yield coming at you. We got the Fed meeting on Wednesday. It would be a shocker if they didn't forecast that they're going to cut come September. So get ready for it. The market is ready for it. We're at 4.15% on the 10-year. And you talk about a move, man. You're talking about, what, about three months you've had the 10-year rise four and a half points. That is a dramatic move in the course of three and a half months. But things have changed dramatically in terms of the forecast, in terms of the Fed, in terms of where they are in cutting over that period of time. You jump over to the dollar index. So what do we have? We have dollar strength coming at you, man. 104.61. Check out that acceleration, right? Now, this is interesting in terms of you have dollar strength with lower yield. Not usually the case. We got the 10-year down about five basis points. We were coming in at about 4.2%. We're at 4.15. So we have dollar strength even with lower yields we are near the lower part of that range we've been in recently you back things up for instance in terms of where we were when we were at the higher yield in the market that was at about april 15th but it is interesting right i mean look at where we are in the dollar we're back to where we were on april 3rd okay for some correlation you take a look at the 10-year april 3rd I mean, not outlandish, but we we're at 109 and change at that price point. So higher, but not exactly to the same degree in terms of where we were. Those lows, again, were about April 25th in the 10-year. Nonetheless, you got dollar strength right now. So it's interesting that all the relationships not quite matching up. we got a lot going on in this market. Normally, if you have dollar strength, you're going to have gold weakness, right? Normally, if you have lower yield, 
you're going to have dollar weakness. So what do we have? We have lower yield, gold strength, but dollar strength as well. So we'll see where the weak stray shakes out, but nonetheless, we go from there. You jump over to the VIX. Volatility index, we've had quite a spike recently. You're pairing some of that spike, but still a 16 handle, 16.77 on that VIX. We see the spike from the doldrums of 12 for the better part of the last couple months. We get that spike all the way up to 19.36. We're back at 1677, but we got a big week. Doesn't get much bigger than the week we got going on right now in this market. As we kick off one of the biggest week in earnings across the board with big tech across the board with a Fed decision and with the jobs number. Now you get 171 S&P 500 companies reported their earnings, reporting their earnings, I should say, along with Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, and Meta. Okay, those are the big four tech that are coming out this week. You're also going to get AMD. You're going to Arm Holdings. You're going to get Boeing. We got McDonald's already this morning. You're going to get Starbucks. And let's take a look at McDonald's to kick off the session. McDonald's. Now, now yeah, we'll pull up this chart because this one's an interesting one, man. And this could be a little dire. Quite the channel. Okay, McDonald's. Our man Bud Rolfs. Miss him, love him. Always thinking about you, Bud. Quite a channel, folks. You're talking about a 10-year channel on a monthly basis going back to October of 2015, nine years to be exact, okay? The only time you got outside of this channel was on the COVID pull to the downside for about a month and a half. We just broke below this channel, and what did you do? There's your monthly. You take a look at it on a weekly basis. We basically came back, tested the channel line. We've moved lower. We're at 253 right now. Okay. Here's your action on their earnings. Now, the headline, the headline's a dicey one, man. Sales fall for the first time since 2020 as traffic drops. The chain fell short of analyst expectations from modest growth. And you see, they knew this was coming. Okay, they are trying to change up the script here. Five dollar value meals launched in the final week of the quarter. You can tell they saw it coming. Sales are dropping. They say, what do we got to do? We got to go back to five dollar value meals. Can they make money on that price point, though? That's going to be the better question, right? Sales declined for the first time since 2020 in the second quarter, falling short of analyst expectations. Same store sales. I mean, how about these numbers, man? Same store sales. Now, this is versus COVID second quarter 2020 when you dipped 23.9. You had a second quarter of 2021 where you're up 40% off those COVID numbers. But even since then, right? Since then, you've had growth of 12%, 11, 9, 9. Look at these numbers, 12, 12, 11, 8. These are compounded numbers, okay? You're growing 12% across the board for almost two to three years consecutively compounded. Things have finally caught up. OK. Yeah. Comp store sales. For stores open over a year, falling one percent from the prior year, each of McDonald's geographic segments saw sales decline in the U.S. The trend was driven by a decline in foot traffic that was partially offset by higher prices. So they have higher prices. Can't even keep up with the fact that they have less people coming in the store. But guess what? McDonald's is positive by almost two dollars this morning. So I'm not sure what got said on the conference call, okay? But it seems like you had a initial reaction lower, market comes back, conference call begins at 8:30, the market likes whatever they're talking about, you're trading slightly higher, and maybe the promise of hey, five dollar value meals coming back, it was only there for a week in the final quarter. We'll finish this up. We'll be right back. Lots to talk about, folks. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A 
former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member. Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets. With updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers, whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Tigers, it's back. The annual July Tiger Dollar Sale. If you've been wanting to try one of our products, from our stellar newsletters to educative webinars, now is the time. From now until August 1st, we're offering a 20, 30, even a 40% bonus on Tiger Dollar purchases. After being applied to your account, your Tiger Dollars will be used for all purchases. They can be easily transferred and they never expire. If you want to receive a 20, 30, or even a 40% bonus from purchasing Tiger Dollars, now is your chance. This is a perfect opportunity to try out a newsletter or save big on your current subscription. This deal is only available until August 1st. So lock in your bonuses fast. Go to TFNN.com today to lock in your bonus. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Morning Market Kickoff is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Markets tend to, they're continuing to give up some of that overnight positive action right now. You got the S&Ps up by 15 points. That's about a quarter percent in the positive, but we've given up 20 points just in the last about 35 minutes since I was getting ready for the program at 8.35 a.m. this morning. Overnight lows at about 55.07 at the beginning of that European session. You see, we were up to what? About 55.27, you dive down 20 points, you get back some of the action at about 5.30, and then we're giving it up yet again. All right, back to McDonald's briefly. So McDonald's, they've been a dog this year. They're down about 15% coming into this earnings, right? You see where we kicked off the year, 292. The market's up 15% driven by tech stocks, but McDonald's had traded lower into that number. You are positive right now, but we'll see if this hole is there. You see a little negative action, a little bit of selling coming in. Come on, zoom in. Yeah, look at that selling. We just got a sell of 50,000 shares. I mean, that dwarfs anything we've had going on. We got some selling going on at 9.15, getting ready for the opening bell. And just like that, we're actually negative now. We got a bid ask basically right around where we closed yesterday at 2 Friday, I should say, 2.52 on the dot. And we're trading right now with a 2.51 handle from McDonald's. And, you know, the premise here is... Are they going to be able to save themselves with these $5 value meal deals that just got launched in the final week of the last quarter? Well, I'm not sure. Uh, that's their story. Okay, we'll see if it plays out. Sales growth is slow this year as diners across the world cut back on Big Macs, pinched by years of price increases and tighter household budgets. At the end of last quarter, they launched the $5 meal 
deal in the U.S. to convince diners it's still an affordable option. Early results suggest it's drawing customers, though any sales boost won't be apparent until later this year. Yeah, and they have a couple other limited edition items. The Bacon Cajun Miss McCrispy and uh, a Grandma McFlurry. I'm not sure that's what's going to save this company. The $5 meal deal might, but I don't know if the Cajun Bacon Cajun Miss McCrispy... I don't think that's gonna, what's going to save McDonald's. Uh, the chain will remain focused on, quote-unquote, reliable everyday value as diners become more discriminating with their spending, CEO said. And outside the U.S., you got boycotts over the Israel-Hamas war. Yeah. System-wide sales, a metric that includes businesses at new restaurants, also took a downturn, suggesting openings aren't offsetting weakness in existing units. And boy, they got an expansion coming down the line. They're looking to have 50,000 locations by 2027, up from 42,000 at the start of this year. So they're going to have 8,000 new locations by 2027. Quite an expansion around the globe in terms of where they're coming from. Pretty remarkable, right? All right, we shift focus to the Fed. We got three central banks coming, and you got Japan, U.S., and the U.K. are set to meet this week. The U.S., all in focus here in the U.S., of course. But as Bloomberg puts it, traders fret as 32-hour central bank spree hangs over the market. You kick things off with Japan, Bank of Japan. We'll see where they go. We jump over to the dollar-yen. This thing has been moving, man. Just talking to our man Teddy Cakestat last week. There's your dollar yen at about 154, 153.94 to be exact. Quite a pullback from the 161.94 range. What is interesting here is, you know, you back things up. 151 was like the, the tippy top peak that the Bank of Japan was basically not comfortable getting above, right? That's where you peaked out in October of 2022. That's where you peaked out in November of 2023. And all we've done is come back to that area. So an area that had been an area of resistance, going to be interesting to see if that becomes an area of support. And really, we're sitting basically at that 3A2, right? Look at it. You drive higher from the beginning of the year at 140, we'll call it, up to 160. You pull back in the span of 160, uh, one week, I should say. You pull back in the span of one week, one red bar to the 3A2. You drive higher yet again, and we pull back basically that same exact area. So, you know, nothing saying this thing can't climb up yet again with volatility and Bank of Japan. They'll be in focus this week. They kick things off. Then we go to the Federal Reserve. Their meeting begins tomorrow. Announcement due on Wednesday. And check it out. They're looking for fully pricing in two quarter point cuts this year with a 70 percent chance of a third. That is where the, the market is right now. Okay, and the market is saying we're getting at least two cuts. We might get three. Keep in mind where we are, folks, okay? The Fed could easily make the case that we could be at 4.75% right now and still in a highly restrictive policy rate. That is the verbiage I expect from the Fed to a certain degree from Chairman Powell at 2 p.m. Eastern time. You get the 10-year yield right now sitting at 4.15%. Pretty remarkable when you think about where we are. I mean, we just talked about the three-month move we've had, right? Treasuries are set to advance in July. Three-month gain would mark the longest streak since 2021. And, yeah, we've been in quite a run. I just said that, what, the 10-year, where were we trading? 107 or something like that on the 10-year? What was our low? 107.04. So basically almost 107. We're up four and a half points over that period of time. Quite a run for the 10-year at 111.14, correlating to a 10-year yield of 4.15%. That is quite a number as well. And then you wrap things up with the Bank of England. They'll be out there as well. Markets are split on whether the Bank of England will deliver its first rate cut since the pandemic on Thursday. Yeah. And they're at five and a quarter percent as well. Inflation has eased some from double-digit gains a year ago. Unemployment is up. Price growth in the service sector is still running high, and the economy has bounced back from a small recession. A 10% rise in the minimum wage in April. Yeah, so we'll see what they do as well. They're coming up on Thursday. So we got Bank of Japan, Federal Reserve, and then Bank of England, along with, as I mentioned, we got a plethora of earnings coming down the line. All right, we jump to some of the earnings. Okay, a couple charts I wanted to pull up here from this Yahoo article that was talking about some of the earnings coming down the line. Now, we get the jobs number on friday 
the July jobs report coming out on Friday, expected to show 175,000 non-farm payroll jobs added in the U.S. with the unemployment rate staying at 4.1, okay? In June, we had 206,000, so that would be a decrease from that number, okay? And take a look at these two charts, all right? If you're looking at trends, look at these numbers. You have non-farm payroll jobs on the left, and you have the unemployment rate on the right. Tough to deny that this number is not getting lower and this number is not getting higher, right? Pretty remarkable. We were flirting with numbers with what? 3.4% unemployment. We're at 4.1 now, okay? You had non-farm payroll numbers chopping between 200 and 300. We're now at a 200 number for the last two months, 218 and 206, and we're forecasting 175. And the month prior to that for April was 108. Yeah. Now, earnings. This is an interesting one as well. Stocks are having a volatile Q2 earnings season. Okay, now this talks about the average reaction to reported sales and earnings. We'll leave you on this one, folks, okay? If you beat on earnings and sales, you're up by about 1%. You do anything else, your markets are tanking. We'll finish this up in terms of earnings when we get back on the other side. Stay tuned, folks. We still got a lot to go over. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento Friday, July 12th and Friday, July 26th, 9 a.m. to noon Eastern Time for three hours of live trading. For this month only, use promo code LarryJuly24 at checkout to save $50 on your first month's subscription. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Hi folks, this is Tom O'Brien. We have a market. Over the past year, the market has been consistent in a strong upward trajectory. But now we're just starting to see signs of volatility. Don't let this volatility scare you. Times like these are when big money can be made. That's why I'm excited to announce a live trading event hosted by yours truly. Join me on Friday, August 2nd at 9 a.m. all the way until noon Eastern Standard Time while I trade the S&P, the Qs, the NDX 100, and I'm going to be trading the one-day options on the S&P as well as the NDX. To make this deal even better, I'm offering one month free of my Market Insight newsletter, which has beaten the market by almost a factor of five this year, in addition to a signed copy of my book, The Art of Timing the Trade. On top of trading the market live, I'll discuss how I plan my trading day, what times I've found to be the best to trade, how I decide to enter and exit trades, and so much more. I can't wait to see all you folks there. Make sure you sign up soon so you can get early access to my market insights and secure your spot. Wow! Let's get them, folks. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. You got the S&Ps up by 13 points to kick off the trading week right now. 55.12, NASDAQ 100 up by 94, Dow up by 73, and you got the Russell up by five right now. We check in on McDonald's on their numbers. McDonald's holding on to the slight positive gains up a buck 64 right now, making a buck 81 up by seven tenths percent, 253.77. Yeah, so take a look at this chart. I think it was 171 S&P 500 companies this week reporting with their numbers. And look at the reaction these companies have had so far for the earnings season. As Yahoo puts it, stocks are having a volatile Q2 earnings season, okay? And what it says now, okay, is you have, who's this? Julian, Emmanuel, Evercore, ISI. Earnings remain a catalyst for volatility, not higher S&P 500 prices. And boy, this is a dicey one in terms of you have on the left side here, if you beat for sales and earnings, right? The five-year averages, your stocks go up by about 0.9%. Well, you're going up 1.5%, and that's if you beat for sales and earnings, okay? You beat top and bottom line, your stock is going up. Well, as it should, not always the case, though. I think Google may have beat for top and bottom line. Someone correct me if I'm wrong, but they tanked because they didn't beat on YouTube revenue, which was a dicey one, okay? But what happens if you beat on sales but your earnings miss. Historically, you go down about 1.8%. Well, right now, you're going down 5 plus percent. And the market's saying, well, how are you beating on sales, but you're not beating on earnings, right? They penalize you, and they penalize you dearly. Well, what if you miss on sales, but you beat on earnings? You're down almost 2% versus historically down almost half a percent. And if you miss on both, you're down about 3.5% when historically you're down by three. So you're down more so than usual and if you beat on both you're up a little bit more than usual but boy the market is really penalizing you when you're beating on sales and you're missing on earnings your stock is down more than five percent volatility coming at you and we get a plethora of s p 500 companies out with their numbers this week and that is putting it lightly so getting down the line in terms of companies McDonald's, we already got out with their numbers. We talked about their trade and hire. Now, Tuesday, we get Microsoft. They begin the big tech companies with their numbers, okay? Microsoft out with their numbers. We get AMD on Tuesday as well. You get some airline JetBlue. We get Merck, Pinterest, Pfizer, Procter & Gamble, Starbucks, SoFi out with their numbers. You get into Wednesday. Now, we get a Fed decision on Wednesday, okay? You're going to get mortgage applications in there. You're going to get ADP private payrolls on Wednesday, a precursor to the non-farm payroll numbers on Friday. They're looking for about 168000 for that number, ADP private payrolls. That number is 8.30 a.m. on Wednesday. Then you get Meta out with their numbers. So remember, we got Microsoft on Tuesday. We get Meta out with their numbers on Wednesday, okay, along with Arm, Boeing, Carvana, Cherry picking a few. You got Kraft Heinz, MasterCard, Cruise Lines, Norwegian out there, Qualcomm as well. And then Thursday, you get the final two with Apple and Amazon out with their numbers. You also get a couple other companies. We got Coin, Booking Holdings, Crocs, DraftKings in there, Moderna, Roku, Sirius XM, and Wayfair. And then Friday, we get the non farm payroll numbers out. And of course, you get a lot of earnings in terms of personal earnings average hourly earnings in there that's going to be watched for any inflation factors the number they're looking for is 175,000 so remember private payrolls they're looking for 168,000 non-farm payrolls they're looking for 175 you're looking for an unemployment rate of 4.1 percent it is a big week and we'll see where we go from there man going to be an interesting one to say the least yeah how about france dealing with it man they had the Rail lines shutting down, and now you got internet lines cut in the latest attack during the Olympics. The Olympic Games are not going to be affected, but you got cables getting cut. Five lines were cut overnight. Repairs are underway. A number of fiber optic cables carrying broadband service across France's southern and eastern regions were cut overnight in the latest attack. Um, as they're trying to mess with France as best they can. Gotta love the Olympics, man. Watching a few of those good. Uh, events this weekend, what, yeah, gymnastics out there. Man, how about those gymnasts? They are just amazing what they can do with their bodies, man, in terms of the strength, the control over their bodies, some great swimming events out there as well. you got to love the competition, man. As a competitor, you just got to love the competition across the board, without a doubt. All right, what else we got pulled up? Let's see. Yeah, we got a debt sale going on. The U.S. 
seen maintaining the long-term debt sizes through October. And then what? We got an election. Debt managers fired back on accusations of partisanship. Well, not surprising out there, okay? Partisanship is everywhere out there across the board. And, you know, the other thing you're going to see out here, okay, is you got Biden out here talking about a call for the changes to the Supreme Court and to the, what's he call it? No one uh, above the law or something like that. No one is above the law. Now, folks, I mean, it's amazing. Everything is partisanship, right? You're talking about here. Now, separate the two. Everybody can't stand when the Supreme Court says something is constitutional or it's not constitutional, okay? You can always pass a law that then becomes law and and takes it away from the Supreme Court to interpret whether that should be law on theirs. And many times the Supreme Court makes the case, and maybe rightfully so, that they, it's not their duty to interpret and add law that's not there, okay? And... For the longest time, the president was not above the law, and I think it's a dicey one, man. And somehow it's going to be political, and I can't help but almost chuckle at that, okay? But the president shouldn't be above the law, folks, okay? And you don't want things to become political. I get the premise, and I get the argument, okay? But nuance is important in everything, and I don't want the president to be above the law. And then the Supreme Court deal, I think this is super reasonable. Take partisanship out of it, okay? Okay. You want to make laws that protect democracy for generations. What this would do, every president gets to nominate a Supreme Court justice every two years and they serve for 20 years. And they have ethics rules on top of it. I don't know how you make a case against that, folks. Okay? Supreme Court justices would serve for 20 years. Every president nominates one every two years. So you still have... I mean, what? That It's probably, I'm just reading about this morning, but I believe that means that every president probably gets to nominate two Supreme Court justices, right? And that way you just don't have an undue influence of any four years. And yes, if you're a Republican that agrees with Trump, you got to love life right now, okay? And that's cool. That's the way the system is. That's how democracy works right now. I get it. I respect it. But what is the problem with making sure? Because eventually it's going to swing the other way. That's what you have to understand. If you love it now, you're going to hate it eventually when a Democrat gets in office and somehow they are the ones that nominate and have an undo. And that's not the best way. Why not have every president have an equal impact on the Supreme Court and every Supreme Court justice have a 20 year term that prevents them from having an undo that somehow a four to eight year reign on the Supreme Court controls, you know, 40 years of the court? I, I I am hard pressed to see how that is a bad thing when you got a 20 year term. It's not a four year term. It's not an eight year term. OK, it's a term that would be a 20 year term and you'd have a nomination every two years. And with it, there'd be some ethics rules that go on top of it, because, you know, what's going on with Clarence Thomas, man, he is getting hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars in donations from people who have cases in front of the court. And, you know, that's not how democracy works, folks. So, you know, don't lose sight of some reasonable natures of changes that can occur. Stay tuned. We'll come back. We'll talk markets. S&P's up by eight. Now, Are negative. you ready to we'll take right charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? 
one simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds for both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Just jumping around to some equities during the break. You got Ford continuing the decline that they saw last week on their earnings. You're off by another 3% so far this morning. You're off by 32 cents. And I was seeing the memes out there on social media this weekend, right? Talking about it's not even – it's it's literally, folks, if you bought Ford in – what year? You're going back to 1987. You're breaking even. I mean, just remarkable sometimes how public companies can – chop around for 40 years without growth and yeah you had growth you had demise okay you go up to 38 bucks you go down to a dollar in that in that process but you're talking about from 87 to 2004 the exact same price and it's like an american mainstay company and meanwhile you know so be careful just leeching on to companies that you think are the bread and butter of American economy because you never know when that might not be the case and you might make no money over 40 years. Meanwhile, the S&P in 87 was trading at even the high before you fell off, 340. So you're up, what, 15-fold, 16-fold? And meanwhile, you have Ford being flat over that bad period of time. Pretty remarkable, to say the least. All right, let's check around to some of the tech stocks before we get their numbers. Microsoft coming out on their numbers. They give it back on the open, still positive by about four-tenths percent. We got Meta coming out with their numbers this week, up by about half a percent to kick it off. You got Amazon up by four-tenths percent right now. Apple shares up by about three-tenths percent right now. Google on the heels of their earnings last week up by 1.3 percent to 171. We jump over to Tesla shares. Tesla catches a bid on the open up by four percent. How about Carvana? They're out with their numbers this week as well up by two percent to 263. Quite a chart for this thing man. Higher prices across the board. From three dollars in late 2022 you come into this year at 50 bucks and that is a series of higher highs and higher lows. We're trading with Carvana up 2% right now at 135.40. Pretty remarkable, man. Bitcoin hanging above 70,000, as I mentioned early in the program, 70,120. Gold contract up about $10, hanging on to those gains right now for gold at 24.37. And we keep our eye on notes and bonds pretty much hanging out. We're just above 4.15% right now. I looked at Amazon. Interesting article from the journal out here talking about Twitch. Pretty remarkable that it's 10 years ago. And this is, you know, sometimes you hear these companies selling out. Why did they sell out? Why didn't you hold on? Well, this is why companies sometimes sell out, man. 
You sell Twitch for a billion dollars 10 years ago and they're still losing money. How about it? The live video service is slowing user growth and workers are expecting more layoffs and changes ahead. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Twitch, folks, it is a huge streaming platform, okay? Uh, they stream gamers out there. There's a bunch of poker players that play live on Twitch, right? It's a huge streaming platform. And Amazon bought them in 2014 for a billion dollars, and they are still losing money, which is remarkable, man. Uh, you have a profitability review at the company, and he, you got Jazzy showing little tolerance for unprofitable businesses, and it looks like that may be coming down the line. The number of U.S. Switch, Twitch users... 37.2 million is what they're looking for in 2025. The forecast for this year is 36.4. Not a lot of growth when you look about you know, when you look at the fact that you were at 32 million in 2021. You're only going to grow that number to 37 million. You compare that to some of the growth that we've seen across the board in terms of YouTube. I mean, this is during a pandemic area where everybody was online, right? And Twitch remains, quote-unquote, a tiny part of Amazon, continues to get millions of visitors a day. However, its business model is challenging. Enabling tens of thousands of simultaneous live streams is expensive, and the company has had to invest in tools to moderate the content. Insiders said the content itself poses challenges as long-form live video doesn't align well with selling ads. Well, I challenge that a bit in terms of there's nothing wrong with just plowing ads in the middle of videos. I don't know if you've noticed. It didn't used to be the case, but Facebook now... Instagram, I think Facebook, they just put ads right in the middle of some people's videos. The one thing I will say is that causes me to click away. It's a new form. They're trying to get as many ads as they can. You used to just see ads potentially in the beginning of videos. And now they've started where sometimes they'll say you're running an ad, your video where we zoom in, you know, and it'll give you that countdown. And as a consumer, I can tell you, I said, that's bogus, man. I'm clicking away. How do they control that? I don't know. But long form, I think that's where you're going to see things. They're just going to start plowing ads. You're seeing it in streaming, right, with the likes of Netflix, Disney, whatever stream, streaming service you pick out there. Yeah. Um, and this is where the numbers are remarkable. When you think about the number of max concurrent viewers, they can the biggest number that Twitch has is seven hundred and twelve thousand. Not a huge number when you think about what YouTube can pull sometimes. The live stream in June featuring creator Kai Sinet, is that how you pronounce it? And comedians Kevin Hart and Drusky broke the company's record, seven hundred and twelve, surpassed a two thousand eighteen record when Drake and Ninja were out there battling on some video game out there. But yeah, they're still losing money. And that is quite a problem when you think about you got Amazon behind you and you still can't make money, make money when they've controlled it for 10 years. Number of hours spent on Twitch globally declining since 2021. Now, you see the increase during the pandemic, right? This is hours spent. You go from $11 billion in 2019 to $21 billion up there. Yeah, in 2023... The live streaming service generated about $667 million in ad revenue and $1.3 billion in commerce revenue, combining to equal about $2 billion out there. Yeah, so that's a drop in the bucket, about half a percent of Amazon's total revenue. But you had Fortnite, and that was what they were playing. I was trying to Fortnite was how Ninja and Drake, I think, were playing Fortnite in 2018 when they broke it. But nonetheless, keep your eye on that one because it is interesting that you got that company losing money. And that is on the heels, if you remember, if you're watching the program last week, I talked about the fact that Amazon devices are still losing money, right? I bought a couple of Amazon Echo Dots, an Echo Dot and an Echo Pop, I think, for Tommy. We got them in the house, and the devices are losing money still for Amazon. So they got a couple problems, and things are going to change, I think, at Amazon. Now, I'm an Amazon bull in the long run, man. They're up by half a percent. It's been quite a run from 81 bucks to the low of last year. To 201 recently, all time highs. You're sitting at 183.44. Now, 183.44, for some context here, is basically right near the all time high. We hit 188.65 in July of 2021. So, all we've done is we've pulled back, kind of test that high. You know, listen, depending on where this market goes, we really get a slowdown. You know, longer term, these markets are going to be fine. But remember the run the NASDAQ 100 has just had, folks, okay? You're talking about a run. And let's 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 do this A to B C to D as we wrap this up again for some context. You just doubled in price from where we were 18 months ago, 100% gain 
okay? And you just completed an A to B, C to D formation that brought you to 20,623 and we hit 20,983. That A to B leg was 10,000 plus points. It started at the COVID lows of 6628. So you had the NASDAQ 100 make a 10,000 point run twice since the lows of COVID. Twice. And you came into COVID at under 10,000 and you had two 10,000 point runs. Yeah. So if you're looking for potential pullbacks, folks, the 382 of the NASDAQ 100 is 17,000. The 50% is 158. The 618 brings you to 14.6. And those just might be healthy pullbacks in the long run. Stay tuned. One more segment, folks. Don't go away. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter, a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Quite a number for Deadpool and Wolverine. How about $205 million just domestically this weekend? All right. Now, this was known that this was going to be a big number, but it's even bigger than they thought. They were looking for between $160 and $180 million for a domestic weekend. Internationally, a quarter billion dollars, just more than that number, 233 So over the weekend, they take in over almost half a billion dollars, $438 million. Pretty remarkable, man. Uh and you know it's it's not surprising man i want to check this one out even you know this is this is what drove these franchises higher folks and i don't know if you saw over the weekend robert downey jr he's coming back as a new character in the universe how they're going to play that into the storyline set to be determined i'm not sure 
but I think it's shown that you can't just push out mundane titles from mundane characters within Marvel. You need the blockbusters and the likes of Hugh Jackman, right? In the likes of the two biggest stars out there, Deadpool and Wolverine. And I can't believe it's it's Ryan. Jeez, uh, shame on me for, for losing that name. I'll get it. Nonetheless, um, they crush it, man. $438 million for the box office as they bring it out. Deadpool and Wolverine. And it's funny. Even Tommy loves Deadpool and Wolverine. Ryan Reynolds. Thanks, Jacob. Jacob, not sure I lost that. He's quite a star, man. And that was the point, right? You get the star power. You need the star power in these movies. You can't just put random people into some of these characters that are not the star powers. And you got Wolverine and Deadpool. They crush the all-time R-rated movie debut. In terms of that number out there, not surprising there either. And this is the first film that Disney has produced for Deadpool. The previous Deadpool movies were under 20th Century Fox. Disney acquired the company in 2019. That brought X-Men and the Fantastic Four back into the larger Marvel portfolio. And, um, yeah, they talk, you know they kept much of the film under content, limited screenings. So everybody wanted to see it on opening weekend, $438 million bucks. 438. That is quite a weekend. Disney up by one and a quarter percent. Uh, but they need more than that right now. That was pretty much expected. They're up with the market right now. NASDAQ up right now, up by eight tenths percent. Dow slightly in the red by 56 points. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up next with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Live programming after that. Have a great Monday, folks. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. We have a market. Over the past year, the market has been consistent in a strong upward trajectory. But now we're just starting to see signs of volatility. Don't let this volatility scare you. Times like these are when big money can be made. That's why I'm excited to announce a live trading event hosted by yours truly. Join me on Friday, August 2nd at 9 a.m. all the way until noon Eastern Standard Time while I trade the S&P, the Qs, the NDX 100, and I'm going to be trading the one-day options on the S&P as well as the NDX. To make this deal even better, I'm offering one month free of my Market Insight newsletter, which has beaten the market by almost a factor of five this year, in addition to a signed copy of my book, The Art of Timing the Trade. On top of trading the market live, I'll discuss how I plan my trading day, what times I've found to be the best to trade, how I decide to enter and exit trades, and so much more. I can't wait to see all you folks there. Make sure you sign up soon so you can get early access to my Market Insights and secure your spot. Wow! Let's get them, folks.